that's right guys it looks like metal e is is done for good he is not going to be a ninja anymore he's just follow he's following his father's footsteps it looks to be that that is going to be what's going to happen to poor metal e no, I'm just kidding. Guys, what is up? Chu here, bringing you another review on Baruto. This episode was actually much better than the last. I, I, I definitely enjoyed that it's it, we saw some speeding up of things, and we finally got a name to this mysterious red-headed kid, a ro Rogi, who seems to be, I guess, nothing more than a tool. I had a feeling last week that the guy that's pretty much behind it all is that guy the white haired dude who was just using him and I feel like he's behind everything that's going on uh, it did suck for metal though like in the beginning of the episode Iwabe and his crew were kinda gun-ho and we had Baruto still struggling after the last episode after being seen what was going on in the, in the village he was struggling on what these thieves were doing the Byakuya gang but Iwabe was more of a Baruto in that in that instance, and to see Iwabe really grow is one of the things that I enjoy. I mean, I've said this many times before. Iwabe is one of the characters to me that is going is underrated, but at the same time has a has a lot of potential. And I think that in this episode, we definitely got to see a lot of Iwabe's leadership, even if it was for a brief moment. Um, unfortunately, that cost him and his guys. I mean, Denki was more useless than Chiaotsu in this kind of episode where he should have done more. Uh, and we also saw Udon after... I thought that this kid, this kid was dead. I'm not going to lie. I thought Udon was dead. I thought that he was no longer with Konohamaru and the other chick. I, I can't believe he's uh, the one in charge of Iwabe and Denki and Metal Lee. But pretty much after all the aftermath and having to sit down, Shik Shikadai and Baruto are talking with everyone. And Shikadai isn't really against what's going on, but he's not in favor. So he's kind of divided like Baruto is. But I feel like Baruto is more on the side that I'm more like, I'm not against what they're doing. Their motives are okay, but the way they're handling it and hurting others, that I can't support. So therefore, I can't be... I can't support him in any form or shape. Like, I just can't. And see, we saw that he was angry about what Naruto, quote unquote, not doing anything. But we know that Naruto is doing his part. Baruto is being typical Baruto. And Shikadai, once again, talks to his friend Rogi, who I guess starts asking him, what does he feel about the village and about his situation? And, you know, do you think that all this modernization is affecting? And. Tashika Dai, who's not even thinking about this, pretty much just answers everything with a drag. You know, let the adults deal with it. I, I, I really don't have much power. You know, it's mostly them who have the power. And Ryogi kind of agrees with him, and he asks him, you know, what does he think about all these events that is happening? And he says, well, I'm not against it. You know, some of my friends are, but I think what they're doing is a noble cause. And of course, Ryogi doesn't you know doesn't expect that answer he's like I, I knew you'd say that I knew you would kind of agree with me and that kind of thought process and I want to also mention the fact that we're getting more of uh, Tono uh, Katsu, Kakutsuku whatever his name is I keep forgetting his name that weirdo we're seeing more of him in this and I'm, it's like it's already being very hinted that this guy is going to be important I feel like and this is just a guess, that they're going to go into his lab. Like, they're going to try to steal some of the junk that he has that might be valuable. So, that is just a guess as to where they're possibly going. They're going, they're going to the pawn shop to steal things from there. But I think that the Byakuya gang might go for this dude's lab. So, it's just kind of a hint as to what might possibly happen. And we have them acting. And it was also cool to see Tamari once again in action. I did like seeing Tamari acting like her typical self and kind of a little i guess in her own way overprotective of her son but not really really if that makes sense and it was cool to see you know i guess how shikadai was kind of processing everything he was realizing that something is up this kid is you know we saw that facial expression of his you know 
something is up he knows something he was hesitant in the battle and by the end of the episode he's really questioning things and once again we see this white haired guy who seems to have some dark motives like he really has some weird motives I think he's like I said he's been causing all these things but by next episode it seems as though she could not finally figures out the truth about Rogi. I think he confronts him and he might even go on the offensive. So overall though, it was a good episode. I liked it. A lot was going on. A lot of people were involved. Character development was happening with Shikadai, Baruto, and uh, Iwabe. But guys, that is it for me. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, stay safe. And I will catch you later. Don't be on the cell phone